Good afternoon, everybody. Thank God for another day among the land of the living. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the word. And thank God for the plan of salvation. Amen. There's nothing that can take away sins but the blood of Jesus. And so we thank God for the blood. We thank God for the the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. That is the gospel message. That is the good news that Jesus has paid our sin debt in full. Now we can have the gift of everlasting life if we just trust in him and play, place all of our faith and trust in Jesus in the, in the finished work at the cross. Um, Paul said he went he went through all the different uh, cities and you know on his missionary trips and it says in Acts 20 and 21 he went to the Jews and also to the Greeks um, testifying both to the Jews and the Greeks repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ so we just thank God for the plan of salvation God is good worthy to be praised amen I want to do a study today on the sin nature, um, understanding what the sin nature is. It's so important to understand the sin nature and why we must be born again and how when you're born again, then you also have the nature of God in you. But we're born naturally with that sin nature. And I want to talk a little bit about that. It's so important because um, you must understand uh why you're saved, how you're saved, and you must understand that you are born in sin and shaped in iniquity, and you have a sin nature in you, and we have inherited that, um, you know, thanks to Adam's transgression. So we're going to read about that a little bit, and um, yeah, I have a couple passages I want to share with you. Um, before we get started, uh, could you uh, please um, like and subscribe and share. Amen. I'm trying to, um, you know, get the gospel message out, you know, to the best of my ability. And I want to reach as many people as possible. We, you know, you see things going on. We know that time is, is uh, winding down and the end of this age is fastly approaching. And you know, we don't know if we're going to take our last breath today or tomorrow, or we don't know when we're going to take our last breath. So it's so important to hear the gospel message and, um, you know, put your faith and trust in Jesus and understand how you're saved, why you're saved. And we need to know 100% where we're going when we leave this earth. So we will spend eternity in heaven or in hell, eternal glory or eternal wrath. And we don't want nobody to die and go to hell. We want everybody to, to live forever with God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and all the born-again believers. So, Scripture says that one plants and the other uh, waters, but God gives the increase. So, we want, to plant, we want to plant the seed and water the seed, and then God will eventually deal with the person and, and save them. Amen. And bring them into the body of Christ. So, God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. I want to read chapter 5 of Romans, and we're going to read a couple passages here. I'll start at 5 and 12. We're talking about that sin nature. Amen. And we're all born with that sin nature. 5 and 12 of Romans says this, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, that's Adam, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them who had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression who is the figure of him who was to come but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. So the offense came by one man, Adam's transgression, because he um, disobeyed God. He ate of that tree, of the, you know, the tree of, 
of the knowledge of good and evil, he was he was given one command not to eat of that tree, and he he broke the command. He ate of the tree, and so because of that sin, um, sin has passed upon all man from Adam all the way to now, to where we all have sinned. We haven't sinned after the same similitude in the same way he did, but we are all born sinners, and we have that sin nature dwelling in us which we have inherited from Adam um, from Adam in his disobedience to God. So verse 15 says this. So we know we're born with that sin nature and sin is passed upon all man and the wages of sin is death. Sin brings forth death uh, physically and spiritually. So we're in bad shape the moment we come into this earth. Amen. We're born sinners shaping in iniquity there's nothing good in this flesh nothing okay verse 15 but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one adam many be dead much more the grace of god amen we're saved by grace amen through faith in jesus christ for if through the offense of one, so through the offense of Adam, his transgression, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one who sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift, is of many offenses under justification. <clears throat> so because of one, Adam's transgression, his sin, death came upon all man, and sin came upon all man, so that we all are born um, into this world sinners, and we have that sin virus in us. But the free gift, see, by one's obedience... And not as it was by one who sinned, so is the gift. So there's a gift being offered. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, okay, verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one, so by the offense of Adam, by his transgression, by his breaking God's command, by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. So we've all been judged to condemnation. We've all been judged to be lost. Amen. Because of one, Adam's transgression. We're all sinners. We're, we're on our way to hell. When we come into the earth, amen, we're, we're in a waiting cell. We're in a beautiful waiting cell. Blue sky, beautiful trees, birds, uh, you know, mountains, valleys, ocean. You know, we're in a beautiful waiting cell, but we are in a waiting cell. We, from the time you're born into this world, you're dying. And when you die you will be judged and the wages that we will have earned as sinners is death eternal death spiritual death that's the bad news but we're talking about the good news by the obedience of one came the free gift see for by one man's offense death reigned by one that's adam's fall much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. So we're all sinners by the offense of Adam. By his transgression, we have all become sinners. We've all inherited, um, you know, being sinners and having that sin nature in us by the disobedience of one, Adam. Even so... By righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men under justification. So by the righteousness of Jesus, the free gift 
came upon all man unto justification. Justification means to be declared righteous. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. This is the nuts and bolts right here. By Adam's transgression, we were all made sinners. Sin fell upon all mankind because of Adam's transgression. So, by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. Amen. So, by the obedience of Jesus, many will be made righteous, will be declared righteous by the blood of Jesus. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. See, the law entered that we it might bring us to the point where we understand that we are all guilty um, in need of a savior. We're all guilty. The law showed us what sin was. It showed us how bad we were, how corrupt we are, and how much of, of need of a savior we are. So, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, by the sin of one, sin fell upon all mankind. We've all been born into sin. We're all sinners in need of a Savior. And by the righteousness of one, Jesus, by his obedience, by his atoning sacrifice, by his blood, amen, we can be declared righteous because of what he did. And it's by grace that we can be declared righteous before God. And it's our faith in Jesus. Five and one of Romans says, therefore being justified by faith, so you're declared righteous by faith in Jesus, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, Amen. We we enter into the grace of God by our faith in Jesus in the finished work of the cross. That's how we can enter into the grace of God. But we must understand that we are born sinners um, and we have inherited that sin nature, the Adam nature. That is the fleshly nature that wants to do the wrong thing. We've been infected with a virus. It's a sin virus. And it causes us in our natural earthly bodies to want to, to sin. Sin is the transgression against God's law. It's disobeying God's commands, his moral law, the Ten Commandments. And when you disobey his law, when you break his law, we're lawbreakers. When you break his law, um, that is sin. And so we're all lawbreakers. I mean, it sounds horrible, but that's what we are when we come into this world. And we must understand we have a sin nature in us. That's why we must be born again. When you're born again, God regenerates you. When you come to saving faith, God the Father. See, to be born again means to be born from on high. And when you're born again, when you repent and you put your faith and trust in Jesus in the finished work of the cross, you're born again. God regenerates you. He regenes you. See, he gives you his genes. Holy Spirit, that is God's genes. And when he regenes you and, and the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you at the born again experience, you now have God nature in you. So you're born in the flesh, the natural flesh, with Adam nature, the sin nature. But when you're born again and you give your life to God, you, 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 um, you, know, you put your faith and trust in him for what he did for you at the cross. He's, he's the savior of the world. He paid for our sins with his precious blood. He paid our sin debt in full. The debt we could not pay, he paid it in full with his blood. Because he did that, we now can um, avoid that eternal punishment, which we have earned. Our wages that we have earned as sinners is eternal death and eternal separation from God. That debt has been paid in full with the blood of Jesus. Now, we don't have to serve that death sentence. Jesus took the wrath upon him 
that we deserved, our death sentence, he took it for us. He died in place of us. And now because he did that, our sin debt's been paid in full, and we can come to Jesus. We can be born again through faith in Jesus and the finished work of the cross. And when you're born again, you now have God nature in you. But you must understand that sin nature will be in you until the day you die and we get our glorious body. But God's nature, when you're born again, you have the nature of God in you. And that over that trumps the sin nature. The sin nature no more has power over you if you have God's spirit in you. But you still have that battle, see, with the mind you serve God, the law of God, but with the flesh, you know, the law of sin. You, you, when you sin, it's your flesh doing it. It's that sin nature in you causing you to sin. That's why you must be pl stay plugged into the power source which is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. The way you can grow spiritually and you can grow that fruit, that fruit can manifest itself, faith, love, patience, um, charity. It's in Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit, the way you can manifest that fruit and that fruit can grow in you is by your um, connection to the power source. You must stay connected to the vine. You must stay connected to Jesus. He is the power source. And when you stay connected to him through prayer, through studying your Bible, um, getting the word of God in you, through striving every day to be obedient to him, but it's your faith in him and your trust in him and, and your, your magnifying him that keeps you connected to him. And that allows the Holy Spirit to work on the inside and to help you live a life uh, free from sin and to help you live a life pleasing to God. Amen. Uh, Romans, I hope that makes sense. Romans 7, I want to read this really fast. Just so you see, even the Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul struggled with this. It says this, chapter sin, this is talking about um, his struggle this, with even Paul, you know, everybody has the sin nature in them, and it's something that you have to you struggle with, and you have to battle every day to 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 um, not fall into the temptation of sin. That's why it's so important to stay connected to the power source. When you stay connected to Jesus, the Holy Spirit can work on the inside and overcome the sin, but you still have that struggle. And it's because of the sin nature that you have until you get your eternal glorious body. It says here in uh, Romans 7, let's see, Romans 7, verse 7. What should we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Let's see. Is that where I want to read? Oh, let's see here. Yeah, that's it. What should we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. No, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law said, had said, you shall not covet. But sin, taking occasion, the sin nature, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I would do, now listen to this, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I. But what I hate, that do I, if, but what I hate, that do I, excuse me. If then I do that which I would not, 
I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it. Let's see. But sin that dwells in me. And that's the sin nature. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not. But the evil, which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law of my members, that's in your flesh, warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Now verse 25, listen to this. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, law of sin. The bottom line is this. That's, that sounds like a lot of tongue twisting reading, but what it's saying is, is that even the Apostle Paul, you know, once he was born again, he came to know the Lord Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Even the Apostle Paul, when he tried to, to um, follow the, the law, he struggled and sin revived. And so he found that it was a struggle, you know, with the mind, you serve God, but with the flesh, you serve sin. The flesh wants to sin. There's nothing good in the flesh. Um, you have to crucify the flesh, and that's because of the sin nature, and we've inherited that from Adam. Um, you know, the bottom line is we all have a sin nature in us. That's the part that wants to do the wrong thing. The Adam nature wants to do the wrong thing. The flesh loves to do the wrong thing. But when you are born again, you now have God nature in you. And God nature, that's what gives you the desire on the inside to do the right thing. But it's a constant battle. Um, you know, you have to stay connected to Jesus. You have to keep your faith in Jesus. And that will allow the Holy Spirit to work on the inside and help you overcome sin. And help you overcome those temptations that come your way. But... Sin nature is what makes it so difficult sometimes to uh, live free from sin. It's the sin nature that makes you want to do the wrong thing. It's the Adam nature in us. That's why you must be born again. And when you're born again by God the Father, you now have God's nature in you. And that's what gives you the desire to seek God and live for him. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we must be born again because we have that sin nature in us, which we have inherited from Adam. So, but with God's help, see, when you're born again, the Holy Spirit comes in on the inside and he now um, helps us to live a life free from sin. So I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Keep your focus and trust in, in Jesus and trust in him for everything. And he will help you uh, live a life pleasing to God. And, um, you know, through the Holy Spirit, we can live a life that's pleasing and acceptable to God. So I hope that made sense. Um, God bless you all. I hope you have a wonderful day and, you know, keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep trusting in Jesus and love God with all of your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. We have an eternal reward if we just um, continue to fight the good fight of faith and keep our trust in Jesus Christ. We're going to inherit the kingdom of God through our faith and trust in Jesus. Amen. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day and love God with all of your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. God bless.